Hey guys, I have a unique task today. Um, I hope you guys are doing well, first of all. And I have a very unique task today. So before I get started into that, um, let us pray. Father, I thank you for miracles. Lord, I thank you for your plans, God, because um, the plans you have are right. The, the ways of a man's heart are one way, but you know it all. Father, and I thank you for answering prayer. In the name of Jesus, amen. Before I get started in my unique task, I'm going to tell you guys um, what's what happened today um for those of you who don't know um i control my mouse of my computer with my chair control so i have two modes i have drive mode and i have mouse mode and mouse mode um is like that I can control my mouse with my um, drive control. I can put it up, down, left, right, whatever. And today when I got home, because I was so excited about doing this thing that I'm going to do for today's video. I was so excited. I was thinking about it on the way home and I was thinking about it last night and I was so excited I got home and my mouse thing didn't work um, so I'm like uh oh how am I going to um, do this because if I take out the handheld mouse I can't use the video because it needs the mouse needs the video like the video thing that I hold my camera in the mouse needs to go there because everything else in my computer is really important and I don't want to screw up anything really important so I I prayed and I prayed and I prayed and I prayed and I came back and now it's working so I surrendered it to God I said God, your will, not mine. So I surrendered it to God, and it it was working like nothing nothing was wrong when I came back. Uh, so God really does answer prayer, and this is a a God plan thing. He totally wants me to do it to do uh, today's sermon this way. Today's sermon is not going to be a sermon. Well, it is, but it's kind of going to be a story um, within a sermon or, you know, whatever. Uh, it's going to be a bit of a story and it's going to be a bit of a sermon because, um, as you know, I'm very creative. I write write fictional books and I love story and I love uh, creativity and I love um, everything about it. Um, so this is the first time I'm doing something like this. Um, so just keep in mind that this is a fictional story. Um, it didn't happen to anyone I know. It didn't, you know, the names are fictional and it's going to be so good. I'm so excited. Um, it is called The Sermon and Story. So when, here's how it'll work. So I will tell a bit of the fictional story and preach a bit of the truth from it. So you'll see how it works when I 
get started anyway. This this sermon story is called The Case of the Uneaten Chicken. It's called The Case of the Uneaten Chicken. So, okay, let's get started. Bobby and Bre and Brenda met in Bible college. Um, Brenda, they were about, let's say about 21. They met in, in, in English class. They, they both went to the same Bible college and they met in English class. Now, Bobby, before Bobby went to Bible college, he wasn't a Christian. He was far from a Christian. He went out drinking every night and a different girl every week and just, just totally just a wild person. Like drinking, snuck into clubs, stealing, did all that kind of stuff. And one night when he was coming uh, from the club that he snuck into with his friends, he, he bumped into an evangelist that introduced him to the Lord because the evangelist saw that there was something um, that needed to be reached in this young 17-year-old. Uh, so the evangelist just lovingly uh, talked to him and led him to the Lord. And so after he was led to the Lord, his life, Bobby's life was totally changed. Um, he started going to church and reading his Bible and the whole, um, everything was just very different for Bobby. So, that's Bobby's story. So, when, when he was graduating high school, he really felt the call to preach, really felt the call to preach, really felt the call to teach God's word, really felt that God was calling him to this. And sometimes when God calls you, it doesn't seem, doesn't seem obvious, doesn't, you know, register with you but sometimes it's so blatant it's like a flashing sign so this is what it was like for Bobby like so he applied to this Bible college to this seminary Bible college so and he got in uh, while on the other side of the country Brenda, I think her name was Brenda. I think I named her Brenda, but, but if I used a different name before, her name is Brenda now. Brenda was the absolute opposite of Bobby. She, she grew up going to church all her life. All her life, she was a church girl. She sang the hymns, she was in the choir. She did the Sunday school teaching, and she loved teaching. Out of all the things she did in her church, she loved teaching, and she loved sharing the love of God with children. So when she graduated high school, she went to the same college but not for seminary. She went to get her teaching degree or teaching certificate 
to teach. So one day, these two people with totally different backgrounds met and started, well, they had an English assignment to do where they had to work in pairs. So, so through that assignment, they got to know each other and really, and really started spending time together and really started to fall in love to love with each other. And so it, it got deeper and deeper and deeper. And what happened was, okay, so they fell in love with each other. And then after college and seminary, they decided to get married. So they dated all through uh, college and seminary. And then after they decided to get married and about two years later, they had their daughter, Melissa. And then two years after that, they had their son, Ryan. And three years after that, they had their, their daughter, Emily. So they had two girls and a boy, Melissa, Ryan, and Emily. So time goes by. Um, so they start a church. They start a church and um, so soon after they start a church uh, the Lord is working so powerfully with um, with Bobby that the church grows and grows and grows and grows but while the church is growing it, it looks like it's a wonderful church, wonderful ministry, wonderful word coming out of it. It's phenomenal. But behind the scenes, there's all kinds of pastor drama. Um, the two associate pastors were from uh, feuding churches before they came to Bobby's church. So, so they were from churches that were arguing and fighting and all that stuff. And they just had this anim animosity towards each other. So Bobby was in the middle of this. Like, these two associate pastors they were they were powerful great at what they did but they just didn't get along with each other so what happened was that um so as the church began to grow and get bigger and god started to move their online ministry exploded their in-person ministry exploded they had 24-hour prayer, all these activities, and it was just, God was working, God was, God was working, God, it was just growing exponentially, and it was wonderful. They had thousands of people every Sunday. But with that growth, exponential growth, came kind of hit it, hidden problems with Bobby and Brenda's marriage. And what happened was as the church began to grow, they kind of slowly drifted apart. Uh, they were so together at the beginning. They prayed together. They had date nights. They, they did all the stuff you're supposed to do when you're married like they were intimate regularly they 
they talk, they they did whatever you're supposed to do. It was wonderful. But as the church started growing, the demand on Bobby became so much. And although he had people around to help him, uh, he had ministers, he had all these team leads and people around, but still when God puts that kind of ministry on you, the responsibility of that is so great. So, so with all that, Bobby was kind of um, trying to be a father, uh, trying to be a pastor, because his kids, his son, and his daughter needed him. Uh, Melissa, Emil, Emily, and Ryan needed him as their father, and the church needed him as the pastor to uh, to cast the vision because in my mind that's what pastors do they cast the vision and um, other pe other people who are gifted in certain areas they um, they carry it out um, so all this is happening in Bobby's ministry, including uh, the two feuding uh, associate pastors and uh, his children and what he has to do for them. And so the devil slowly starts to erode their marriage. He's a great dad and he's a great pastor and he's an okay husband but um, the thing with Brenda is she doesn't say anything that is going on like when he there is one time where he it's her birthday and he forgets that it's her birthday and schedules a pastoral meeting on her birthday. So he, so, and because his secretary says, um, he says to his secretary, is everything ready for the meeting? And he's, she said, yeah, everything's ready for the, for the meeting. Uh, and he, she, he, he said, what would you like me to tell Brenda? He says, tell Brenda? Why do we need to tell Brenda anything about the meeting? He and his secretary says, well, pastor, it's her birthday. And you you're not going to be home till late tonight. And he's like, oh, shucks. Church bird. So he calls her. He calls her and says, I'm so sorry, honey. I have a pastoral meeting. These two, these two associate pastors don't like each other and we need to figure out uh, and it's bringing the whole whole team down, and I need to figure out strategies for either them to get along, or let go of one of them, or but if I let go of one of them, uh, the other one, it's just a mess. I'm sorry, I can't, um, I can't uh, come home. And she says, oh no, it's okay. And he, and she says, I love you. And then she hangs up. And then uh, she was planning a nice romantic dinner and all that stuff. 
and she found a sitter for the kids and you know so after he calls um after he calls she takes off uh the dress um what was up the candles you know and goes to her room and just cries um and so it's all these little things like that that start eroding their marriage it's not a big thing because often in life it's the little things that start eroding your life it's not the big things a bunch of little things lead to big things so that's what happened uh that's what that's what happens to them so one day um brenda decides to take emily to Emily Emily to visit her sister um just to get away from it all because they're just like resentment is slowly starting to build up and everything is slowly starting to erode and she's feeling it but because he's under so much stress at work and with these two pastors that are feuding uh, together uh, he doesn't see it uh, because quite often I'm not married but I've heard I've heard from a lot of women quite often when a man has something going on at work he doesn't it's hard for him to see what's going on at home because men have the inherent um push in them to achieve to hunt to gather to provide so that's what bobby is doing and he doesn't want to uh, stress his wife out about what's really going on. She knows a bit of what's going on, but not to the extent. And the same thing with her is he he knows a bit of what's going on with her, um, but not to the extent of what it's going on. So he takes his daughter no she takes the two daughters away to visit her sister because she just can't handle it any anymore and she decides okay you know I while I'm away I'm gonna cook I'm going to cook my husband and my son this new chicken recipe. So she spends two hours cooking this new chicken recipe and she finally gets it right, wraps it up and leaves it in the fridge with some rice for for her husband and her son while the boys are away for while while the girls are away so when the when she goes away with her daughters she takes both of them i said she took one but she took both her daughters to and her stuff to visit her sister their aunt for the weekend so anyway so she says um, Brenda says to Bobby 
I'm leaving the chicken for you to to eat with Ryan and I I want you to tell me what you think of it and and uh, he says okay yeah yeah and then he's he's kind of concentrating on this Sunday sermon when she says that I'm leaving the chicken in the fridge and I want to know what you think of it. So what happened is when, when the girls are away, the guys will play. So what happened is when, um, so instead of eating the chicken, they went to play paintball, they went to uh, play video games, watch action, an action movie, they had some father-son bonding time, and he saw the chicken, but every day she was away, he was like, oh, we'll eat it tomorrow, oh, we'll eat it tomorrow, and when, when, the time came, when tomorrow came, when the ending came, and they were coming back, he, he's like, oh, he's like, oh, Bobby's like, oh no, she'll understand, she's a very understanding person, we were having father-son time, and we were having fun, and she'll understand, so when Brenda comes home with the girls, she said, Oh, how was it? Um, how was your weekend? Uh, he says, oh, it was great. We went to paintball. We watched action movies. We, you know, played sports. Did a bunch of guy stuff. How was yours? I'm, and she said, oh, we painted our nails. We went to the mall. We... We did all kinds of girl stuff. It was fun. And he, and she said, Oh, how did you like my new chicken uh, recipe? And he's like, um, uh, and he's like, well, we didn't actually get around to eating it. And she's like, what? You didn't get around to eating it? You mean I spent two hours trying to make this new chicken recipe and you, all you had to do was open the fridge, put it in the microwave, put it on a plate and eat it and you didn't do that with our son? And she's like, I'm tired of doing things that, that you don't appreciate. I'm tired of, of doing this. So they have this big fight and she doesn't, and he still doesn't know what the big deal. He's like, it's just chicken. And she's like, it's not just chicken. You don't care about me. You know, all all that stuff. So she gets really mad because um, he he didn't eat it, <laughs> and she slaved over it. And you know, sometimes when you don't talk about issues, a little issue leads to a bigger issue, leads to a bigger issue and the whole thing blows up. So that chicken uh, mishap blew up into something big because it was not really about the chicken. It was about Brenda feeling appreciated, uh, her feeling that her husband and son loved her and treasured her and respected the time she put into that chicken. And sometimes we don't understand 
how our little actions can really affect people. We think that it's just little, oh, it's just chicken or whatever, but to them, it's really a big deal. And sometimes when you don't confront the little issues uh, in relationships or what's really going on, when you try and brush it off, it builds and builds until it becomes a volcano and erupts. And this chicken issue erupted all those kind of, not only the chicken issue, but all these little issues that she previously ignored um, that affected her. Because each time he, he stayed late at the church, each time he put a sermon before her, each time he didn't come to one of the kids' games, that harbored resentment. And the chicken issue was just, was just the match that sparked uh, the fuse and everything blew up. And after that fight, um, he, she was like, I can't do this anymore. I can't do this anymore. He said, she's like, he's like, can't do what anymore? He's like, and she's like, well, I can't, I can't live like this anymore. Pretending that the little things you do to hurt me don't matter to me. He's like, she's like, I'm, I try to be supportive, I try to be loving, but it seems like everything I do goes unnoticed. And he seems like you can't, it seems like you care about the church and, and the pastor's getting along more than you care about me and the kids. And she's like, I want, and she's like, He's, she's like, I want a divorce. I, he's like, he's like, why don't we go to pastoral counseling? We can, we can find a counselor and talk this out. She's like, I'm way past counseling. I don't, I don't want to even think about this anymore. I'm done. So basically, the next day. The next weekend, she leaves with the kids. And after she leaves, everything in Bobby's life erodes. Like, everything. The church just, just breaks up because he can't, he can't think of anything but how he lost his wife and how, he, how he's losing his children his kids because of the separation. Uh, Ryan's getting in trouble at school. His, Emily is, is crying at night and having nightmares. And his other daughter is um, hanging around with boys she shouldn't. So everything is like eroding. His church is eroding. His family is eroding. His life is eroding. So what he finally decides to do, which is what he should have done in the first place, is just get down and pray. Um, sometimes when we are going, when things are falling apart, no, sometimes when things are good, we don't pray. And that's the time we should pray because when things are good, um, the devil will always find a way to erode what's going on. And that's, and he'll always find a way to let these little foxes spoil the, the vine. So pay attention to the little things that are going on, the little mishaps that are happening in your life. 
so they don't turn into a big blow up. And don't be afraid to confront things right away when they happen. Because sometimes, uh, as human beings, we're afraid to confront things because we're afraid to hurt people. But if we don't confront things, they get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. And this goes for any relationship, not marriage. Or and this goes for your co-workers, your sister, your brother, your church members, whoever. We need to learn how to manage conflict and how to deal with it in a way that doesn't hurt. Deal with it in a way that deals with the issue, not the person. When you're confronting issues, issues, make sure you make the main thing the main thing. That you don't uh, lash out or destroy the person. Sometimes when we are confronting issues, we are not confronting issues, we are confronting people. And when you confront the person, it really sometimes destroys their self-esteem and destroys their self-worth and makes them get defensive. But when you confront the issue in a way that um, promotes conflict resolution to the issue, you can solve the issue and work out the issue. Because working out issues is human. Having issues is human. But we need to understand that there, there is a person behind, behind each issue. There are people. And, and in our quest to solve the issue, we sometimes harm the people that that issue is affecting. So keep the main thing the main thing. So back to Bobby. So when Bobby, so all this thing, all these things are going on in Bobby's life, and he doesn't know what to do, cause here he is, the senior pastor, and everything's falling apart. So one day he calls a pastor friend who is also a counselor and asked to see him. Um, so he sits down and talks with this counselor and through the process of time, the counselor helps him to see that the issue is not his wife, the issue is not his children, the issue is not his church, the issue is not even the other pastors, the issue is him. And he works through all these issues with this pastor friend, this pastor counselor friend. And two things I want to say here. Um, sometimes when, when we um, have issues, we don't go, sometimes counseling is like a scary word, but I would recommend if you're having uh, reoccurring issues to go seek help, go seek counseling, because even the Bible says in counseling there is safety and there are good pastors and good counselors around everywhere you look and God will guide you into what kind of counseling you need whether it be professional counseling or whether it be just talking to a friend find a place to be authentic find a place to work through those deep issues find a place to just Put down the mask, put down the armor, and just be 
you and be authentic. And don't be afraid of that. Because when you work through your deeper issues, you'll understand the the root of your pain and you'll understand how to deal with it. When we don't work through the deeper issues plaguing our heart and we cover them up with work, we cover them up with school, we cover them up with sex, we cover them up with drugs, we would not be the 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 humans that we're supposed to be. Um, the reason why a lot of people are dealing with so many issues, it's because th they're carrying so much weight. They need a place to drop the weight. They need counseling. They need help. And yes, God is the greatest counselor ever but sometimes he will lead you to other people that can help you give you strategy to deal with whatever pain you're dealing with and years ago a friend now this is a true story years ago a friend gave me an analogy she said picture a house with a lot of rooms and a nice bathroom and and nice living room and all that stuff. But picture a bedroom or a basement. Those places that people don't don't see filled with junk. We we have so many rooms that are so nicely set up and all that stuff. But underneath in the back bedrooms there are things that we don't let people see imperfections proclivities propensities that we are afraid to let loose and god is saying today let that loose be authentic be be real find a place Go to counseling, do whatever you need to do to get the cl clutter cleared up. Because after that clutter will be restoration. And after that restoration will be freedom. And the Bible says, who the sun sets free is free indeed. God wants you to walk in freedom. God wants you to walk in wholeness. God wants you to walk in his great plans for you. He says, Beloved, I wish above all things that you would prosper and be in health. He wants, even as your soul prospers. So if your soul, your mind, will, and emotions is not prospering, that means you're not prospering. And God wants you to prosper in every way. Prosperity is not financial. That's just a top, not just financial. That's just a teeny tiny part of it. Prosperity is financial, it's health wise, it's mental, it's spiritual. God wants you firing your best on all cylinders. God wants you to live your best life on all cylinders. So, what happens to Bobby, back to the story, what happens to Bobby after a few counseling sessions, he understands that he needs to change him. He doesn't need to change Brenda. He doesn't need to change his children. He needs to change how he works. So he goes into work one day and makes the decisions first first of all to sit down and have a talk with those two ministers and for years the pastors have been feuding with each other because they came from feuding churches and one day one day bobby sits down with both of them and says 
look, we need to work this out. And if we can't, you guys are going to have to be off the pastoral team because I can't deal with this anymore. Sometimes you, sometimes in your life, you need to make the hard decisions. You need to leave the drama behind. Sometimes life is too dramatic and you just need to leave the drama behind. You don't need to leave your friends behind, but if sometimes if people are bringing you drama and pure drama, it's different if um, once in a while um, somebody has issues and they come to you with it. But if it's just constant drama, 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 that's a problem. And you need to make the decision like Bob, like Bobby and Mary J. Blige. There's no more drama in my life. And that's what he did. And it turns out that, that these pastors were holding on to pain that, were, that was years in advance. And just by talking it out together, they were able to uh, come to solution. And sometimes when you have to deal with pain, um, you can talk it out with the person and sometimes we hold on to things we hold on to things that would be solved with a conversation and and for his schedule um bobby delegates preaching instead of preaching uh every time in every service he begins to delegate the preaching uh, to different pastors. Um, and I will say something to pastors here. Um, I'm not a pastor yet, um, but the Lord's calling me in that vein. I know he is. I don't know when he's going to set me up with that or whatever, but it's his will. But one thing that he told me is you are not me you you are only one person and you are not the only one who can speak for me sometimes pastors i find feel this weight that they are the only one who can speak and they're the only one who can really preach but it's not the case you're just a vessel. You're not God. God speaks. People don't speak. People are just the mouthpiece. And I think in any church, a pastor needs to get to understand that he's just a vessel. And having a team that understands the vision the philosophy of the house and can get behind it is key to any leadership and understanding giftings and understanding talents because I believe in every church there are giftings and talents and it's um, this, the senior pastors or the leadership team's job to see that, that leadership in that person to see that particular gift in that person and call it out. Um, I believe that a primary job of a pastor, other than shepherding, shepherding the people of God, is to be able to spot giftings and to be able to spot other talents. And talents don't have to be uh, leading worship or whatever. They can be talents of administration they can be talents of organization and when you, when you use all those talents in the ministry that God has given you, the load will be lighter and when you understand that this ministry is a team effort, not only a me effort, 
It will make the ministry go smoother. And so that's what Bobby does. And um, so doing that made or delegating made, made him have time for his family, made him have time for his wife, made him have time uh, for his for whatever he wasn't making time for before. And with Brenda, she, she, be, she also, in that time that Bobby was getting counseling, Brenda was as well from a, another counselor. And it turned out that she didn't feel significant because her, in her mind it was all about I have to do this I can't I can't speak because if I do it'll make people upset so she avoided conflict and because she wouldn't confront her husband on what was going on their marriage eroded and and she was in a tough spot. So she needed to know, to learn ways to deal with conflict. And she needed to learn that she wasn't a bad person because she dealt with conflict. She was actually a strong person. And sometimes people think they're bad people because they have to deal with conflict. Conflict is a part of life, but it is all in the way you deal with it. Like I said before, you don't attack the person, but you attack the problem. And I think when we learn, learn to attack problems and not people, we'll be so much better off. And also, too, um, she learned that she didn't really understand what was going on in the church. She expected him to understand her needs, that the kids needed, needed him and that she needed him, but she didn't get to understand what was really going on with him. Sometimes we want, us, we want the person to understand what's going on with us, but we don't understand what's going on with them, and we don't bother to understand. So one thing she did was they came together and said, let's work this out, let's not get a divorce, let's not deal with this. And first and foremost, this time, they went to the Lord in prayer. They prayed for each other, they prayed for their family, they got the kids involved, and they all started to pray together as a family. Not only one time, but they did it every day. They called it prayer huddle, where each, the Bobby would pray, and then Brenda would pray, and then the Melissa would pray, and then Ryan would pray, and then Emily would pray. So each and every family member got to pray and that made their family stronger, that made them come up with solutions, that made them just stronger and better as a family. And they also spent time together as a family doing uh, family things and they um, came up with a game that that the family members would each come up, each uh, memorize a scripture verse, and who could ever come up with it the fastest wins. So they made they made Christ fun for the kids. Sometimes, as I know, I'm not a parent yet, but I was a kid, and sometimes uh, religion and 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 church can be tedious for kids. 
So if you want your kids speaking from a former kid, if you want your kids to have a booming relationship with Christ, make it fun. Come up with games. Um, you know, relate it to their lives, you know. Bring them to the Bible before before you pick up uh, Dr. Phil or Dora. Pick up the Word of God and say, let's see what the Word of God has to say about it in a fun way and get to know each and every one of your kids and get to know what their bent is because if you know what they're good at, you would know how to approach them, you would know how to bring faith into their lives because each kid is different and in order to bring faith into their lives you need to meet them where they live uh, and that's what they did to to slowly restore their family and after their family was restored and after things were delegated at the church giftings were seen and all of that was done it what um the church got back to even greater than it was before this mess started and the family was greater richer in every way and people were growing people were just being blessed by what the Lord had done in their family and they told their story and restored uh, help restore a lot of people in their marriages and they just lived a happier life um I want to talk about testimony for a second and then I'll be done um I think it's important to share your testimony with people because your testimony helps people so after God has has brought you through something don't hide your light under a bushel spread it tell people what he's done and if they judge you if they think um, wrongly of you that's their problem but there is somebody that needs to hear your story so do not be afraid of your testimony I'll talk to you later you guys I'll see you soon bye